Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is about S and R configurations. If you want to skip to any particular section of this video, you can do so by clicking the timestamps found in the description section below. Please also make sure to subscribe to our channel as this helps us out a lot. Okay, let's get to the video. SNR configurations are a key concept in stereochemistry. Stereochemistry is a branch of chemistry that focuses on the 3D arrangement of atoms within molecules. It also considers a spatial relationship between different chemical groups within molecules. Stereoisomers are part of stereochemistry. Stereoisomers are molecules with the same molecular formula and connectivity of atoms, but differ in their 3D arrangements. SNR configurations are used to classify chiral molecules. Chiral molecules are molecules that cannot be superimposed onto their mirror images. The terms SNR configurations are used to describe the absolute configuration of the chiral centers. To understand SNR configurations, it's essential to grasp the concept of chirality. A chiral molecule lacks an internal plane of symmetry. This means that it cannot be superimposed onto its mirror image. Chirality often arises in a molecule with a carbon atom bonded to four different substitutes. This creates what is known as a chiral center. A chiral center can also be referred to as a stereocenter. If you want to learn more about chiral molecules or chirality, you can watch our video on that topic by clicking the card on the top right hand corner of the screen. Now that we've considered how SNR configurations applies to the realm of stereochemistry, let's dive deeper into how we can assign a molecule as S or R. The assignment of SNR configurations is based on a system called the Kahn and Gold Prelog Priority Rules. These rules prioritize substituents attached to the chiral center based on the atomic number of the atoms directly bonded to the chiral center. The priority is determined by assessing the atomic numbers of each substituent group attached to the chiral center. First, let's go through the rules and then we will apply to an example just to understand it better. There are three main rules associated with this system. The first rule is that you need to assign priority to each of the four groups based on the atomic numbers. Now, what does this mean? First, you need to identify the four substituent groups attached to the chiral center. For that, you need to recognize what is a chiral center, and this is usually a carbon atom attached to four different groups. Once you identify the four groups, then you need to identify the atomic number of each group. The substituent with the highest atomic number is given the highest priority, which means it's assigned number one, and subsequently so you assign number two, three, and four. The one with the lowest atomic number is assigned the number 4, which is the lowest priority group. Hydrogen usually falls in the lowest priority group because its atomic number is 1. If there is a tie in the atomic numbers, then the atoms farther along the chain are considered. Sometimes the number of bonds are considered as well. If multiple bonds exist, they are counted as equivalent to the same number of single bonds. Double bonds are considered equivalent to two single bonds, and triple bonds are considered equivalent to three single bonds. The second rule is that you need to arrange the molecule now that you've assigned priority numbers. After assigning priorities, the next step is to arrange the molecule so that the lowest priority substituent, which is usually hydrogen, is pointing away from you. This is only done if the lowest priority group is not initially oriented in this way. So you might have to mentally rotate the molecule. And the third step is to determine the configuration. Now, visualize the order of the priorities 
looking from the highest to the lowest priority group. If the order is clockwise, then an R configuration is associated to it. R stands for rectus, and this is Latin for right. So if the priority groups are rotating in a clockwise direction, which is it's moving towards the right-hand side, then it's easy to remember. However, if the priority groups are moving in a counterclockwise direction, then it is assigned an S configuration. S stands for sinister, and this is Latin for left. Now that we know the rules, let's apply it to an example. Consider the compound 2-chlorobutane. In this molecule, the chiral center is the second carbon atom, which is C2. The substituents attached to the chiral carbon is hydrogen, methyl, ethyl, and chlorine. Now let's go through the three rules. First one is determining the atomic numbers and assigning priority groups. Priority is assigned based on the atomic numbers of the atoms directly attached to the chiral center, as we discussed before. So chlorine has the highest atomic number, which is 17. Therefore, chlorine gets the highest priority number, which is 1. Next is carbon, and ethyl takes priority over methyl. The reason for this is that in ethyl, the carbon is connected to another carbon. So the ethyl group gets the priority of number two, and the methyl group gets the priority of number three. And finally, hydrogen gets the lowest priority group, which is number four. The concept of multiple bonds does not apply here, as multiple bonds do not exist. So we will disregard this part of the rule. And now let's move to the second rule, which is arranging the molecule. This step entails positioning the molecule so that the lowest priority group is pointing away from you. If this is needed, then you mentally rotate the molecule to achieve its orientation. And then finally, the third step is to determine the configuration. Now, observe that the order of the priority groups is such that chlorine comes first, ethyl comes second, and methyl comes third. We do not consider hydrogen because it's going into the page. So when we consider the direction from the highest to the lowest priority groups, we see that the order is clockwise, which means that the configuration is R. Now, just to help you recognize how this is different, Let's consider this molecule's mirror image. We would go through the same steps and the priority numbers for each group would remain the same. But you see that its mirror image would have the configuration of S. Molecules with opposite configurations, that is S and R, at a chiral center are enantiomers. Enantiomers have identical physical properties. That means that they have identical melting points, boiling points, and solubility, but they differ in the way that they interact with plain polarized light. Therefore, these are a type of optical isomer. If you want to learn more about enantiomers, you can watch our video on this by clicking the card on the top right-hand corner of the screen. If you also want to learn more about plain polarized light in the context of polarimetry, we also have a video on that, which you can check out on our channel. Now, you might be wondering why this is important. The SNR configuration system in stereochemistry is crucial because it provides a standardized and systematic way to describe 3D arrangements of atoms around chiral centers. Understanding this and the stereochemistry of compounds is significant and has important implications in various fields of chemistry, biochemistry, and pharmaceutical sciences. For instance, it helps us to predict reactivity. Different isomers, especially enantiomers with SNR configurations, can exhibit distinct reactivities in chemical reactions. The spatial arrangements of atoms influences how molecules interact, and understanding this helps us predict how reactions might occur and their outcomes. This is important in drug development. Enantiomers often have different biological activities. In drug development, 
it is critical to control the stereochemistry of a molecule to ensure that the desired enantiomer is what is synthesized and harmful ones are avoided. The SNR configuration is essential for designing drugs with specific therapeutic effects and minimizing side effects. This was very evident in the example of the drug thalidomide where one was therapeutic and solved nausea in women that were pregnant, whereas the other enantiomer caused severe birth defects in the baby. So this highlights the extreme importance of identifying stereochemistry enantiomers and identifying ways to differentiate them. Another factor why identifying different molecules and, and their configuration is important is because enzymes and substrate molecules are highly specific and only react with certain types of molecules. Enzymes are chiral molecules and their active sites often interact selectively with specific stereoisomers. Knowing the SNR configuration help researchers understand enzyme substrate interactions, facilitating the design of enzyme inhibitors or mimickers that are again important in pharmaceuticals. That's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please, please make sure to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video. Bye.